Good morning, everyone. I'm Polly. This is Paddy. Morning. Hi, Paddy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm a little bit tired today. What's your saying? Same, but... same. Oh, well. Mm. We're here. We're here. It's, um, you know, too. hump day. We're yeah. halfway there. I think winter just does that, you know. It's harder to get out of bed in the morning. You well, sleep much better. You're a bit, yeah, mm. yeah. Oh well, um, we're lucky we've got a beautiful day here in Zuri. Another beautiful day. I feel like we say that, starting to say that every all week. the time. Yeah. I hope it's not going to rain next week. <laughs> I'm not sure this is real wood, but it's yeah. all right. Anyway. That's another question. Uh, Welcome everyone. Um, this morning session is all about you effectively uh, managing your resources, uh, planning ahead, uh, staying on top of your whips, uh, and managing your team without them feeling like they're being managed. <laughs> um, making their life easier, I guess, and making your life easier too. Um, hi, hi, Catherine. Um, feel free to, should I just cover the housekeeping first? Go for and, it, yeah. 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 Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, say hi, um, say where you come from, what you do, any questions or comments along the way, just send them through. We'll go through them at the end of the session. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we want it to be a bit of a, we can, it can be a bit of a discussion actually, but we want to share a few tips and tricks on how you would be using schedule um, and touching base on planning a job as well and how you would be using few areas of stream time to then understand where your team's at. Yeah, exactly. It's about, it's about getting everything in a position where the schedule is able to be leveraged and mm -hmm. used really well and easily. And a big part of that is not so much about necessarily managing and scheduling all the work for your team, but giving them everything they need to, to at least do it themselves to the point where as a traffic manager, you just need to keep an eye on things um, yeah. and ensure everyone is doing what they're doing. Um, essentially, the more you can kind of take your hands off the wheel, the better here. But knowing that we can kind of keep an eye on things as we do that is going to be a big part of what we hope to work through today. Yeah. Um, and a bit of a workflow as well. We suggest a certain workflow here in this session, but also we are keen to know whether you have different different suggestions, different ideas around using the schedule and maybe using other areas of stream time, like priorities. For exactly, example, yeah, yeah. That we will also touch base on by end of the session. Exactly, cool. Um, so is there anything else that we need to address before we dive in? Mm, maybe a bit of a structure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Right. So I think we're planning on starting off. We'll we'll talk more about planning a job, um, getting the job in a position uh, where it's ready to be, you know, properly resourced, and setting the right expectations for yourselves and for the team, and looking at what you can do early in that job setup process to make uh, the work or the, the actual project run as smoothly as possible down mm -hmm. the track. And they might seem like really rudimentary and simple things, but we want to address them so it's clear. And in case you know, you're know you not doing these things, we want to encourage you to do those things. Um, uh, and then we'll flow into the schedule um, where we'll spend quite a bit of time, obviously talking about resourcing and team capacity. Mm -hmm. These are the things we'll be interested in, being able to see different ways of viewing things in the schedule and how to best achieve a particular goal in the schedule. So if you guys did have particular things that you want to be able to see or do and aren't quite sure how to do it, drop it into the messages there yeah. and we can, we can address that one explicitly um, beyond what we've got already. So we'll be looking at the jobs schedule and the to-do schedule, those two different areas. Um, and then finally, we are going to take a look at priorities. Um, we've recently kind of been aware of some people using priorities to manage their team capacity and look at who's working on what and you know how full they are in terms of workload and what jobs they're working on mm -hmm. based on that priorities board. So we are going to look at how people are doing this. Um, so you guys can even take notes from that. If you want to, you know, adopt a similar workflow, um, yeah. talk about the advantages of doing that, um, and yeah, yeah. Uh, with regards to priorities as well, we got that idea from our clients too. So mm -hmm. it's amazing. So our clients do some amazing things in stream totally. time, and they create. Think of that. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> exactly. So um, we're gonna show you how some of our clients do it, and we think it's a really good idea of how you would be using priorities to understand where your team's at, where your studio's at. So yeah, um, stay tuned. Exactly, but as exactly. Paddy said, any questions mm. um, about schedule um, or any other uh, priorities or how you would be seeing 
team capacity in stream time or any suggestions, just send them through and we will cover them at the end. Yeah, and it's great to see such a strong turnout today. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions as we go. Um, lots of people here being mm. vocal this morning, mm. um, which is great to see. But awesome. how about we get this show on the road? Let's do it. Okay. So what are we going to do first? All right. Let's look into, let's go into the schedule, um, the job schedule. And I want to talk about um, pre-creation of the job. So um, perhaps, and I know you guys in a position where you, you have lots of clients calling you. That's a good way of running your business. Uh, lots of clients calling you, asking you to do to work on projects and whether you need to sit down and think about, can you take those projects on? Yeah. Um, is your team able to, um, is your current team able to manage this project in the future? Mm -hmm. How busy are they going to be in the future when this project is going to come in place? Maybe this project is six months long. It's half a million dollar budget. So it's a huge one. So maybe do you need more stuff? Or do you have enough stuff to take on this project straight away? So first of all, what I'm going to be interested in doing in that sort of situation is mm -hmm. looking ahead at uh, how many jobs we might have on in the studio at that point in time. We want to yep. see how busy we are and can we take them to work. So let's say we've got this job that's due to come through maybe the end of September, start of October. Mm -hmm. I can just click on these dates here across the top, my dates of the week, which will give me this calendar, which will allow me really easily to navigate into the future. Obviously, we can scroll, but if you are skipping ahead, something like months to a particular date, just mm -hmm. click there and you can get the calendar and jump immediately to those dates. It's quite nice and easy. And currently, we've got this uh, uh, job schedule grouped by due date, so it's going to show all of our jobs that are in play um, cascading by their due date. So I'm obviously scrolling down here to see the things that are going to be happening in September, October later this year. And it looks like there are a few projects that we've kind of got lined up, but generally it's not looking too, not looking too busy. And throughout that month of October, I can see that there's still not too much else happening until November, yeah. November and December. then even then December, January. So. I think we're probably in a position where we can take on some more work yeah. around that point in time. So what we want to do is why don't we just create a new job right in the schedule and we can plot those dates in right here. So awesome. remembering that we don't have to actually be in the jobs area to create a new job. We can do this from the schedule if we want. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say this is an ad campaign for Spotify called Summer, oh, Summer of Music, Music, let's just say for Spotify. Great. So I'm going to create and plan this job out and instantly we can add some items yep. and uh, I can just get it. I can kind of gauge what we'll need to do here. So yeah, there so, might be some discovery needed. Um, let's, right now we're actually just planning ahead. Exactly. So we are uh, creating a job in the future. Exactly. And I'm just going to plot these dates in. They might be really rough at the moment, but what they're doing is giving me some context around when this job's going to happen. Yeah. So those dates that Patty just plugged in, uh, those are the start and the end date of an item. Exactly. So obviously the end date of a uh, job will be taken from the latest end date of an item. Exactly, exactly. So you can see those at the top level here again, Summer of Music. It's kind of reaching across these two items that mm -hmm. we've got. And we might work in two week, two week sprints here. So we are kind of saying for each of these phases, I do want to plot them out in two week increments. Yep. Um, and then there'll be some design done after this. Cool. And this might be enough for me to at least get going at the moment. Um, and I actually want to dive into this job now and get a bit more granular with my job planning. Mm -hmm. So I can just click on the jump button here and head back to the job. And here you can finalize your plan, I guess, to add some totally. more, uh, plan time for uh, those items that we just created. 60 hours. 60 hours for discovery. Let's say um, 80 hours. Yeah. And then, yeah, pitching. 50 for design, sure. if you like, you can add it up. Uh, yeah, great idea, buddy. So you can move them all as uh, those items to in post, which means you can start planning out a job for your team. You can add a team member under those items, mm -hmm. but your team won't be seeing those because they actually don't need to be uh, distracted by this project, which is happening one in 
when when do we plan it? At in, least in September. In September. October, really. In okay. So they they really don't good. really need to know it's coming until it's there exactly. uh, to start working on. So from the schedule here, uh, what Paddy just did, he jumped from the job to back to view schedule that uh, just shows you that job that we just created. So from here, you can even move some team members under an item. Um, and what Paddy is doing, he's just planning. I'm um, just. More. Yeah, I'm creating a date range bracket from for these dates of the project because yeah. I want to see my team's availability along the bottom here throughout those dates because I do want to start to think about who I'll need to put aside to actually work on these and um, maybe kind of just stepping back a bit and explaining at a higher level what we've done here is we've added these dates in for this job and mm -hmm. we've planned some hours and those two pieces of information are really important to get in early um, in the project because they're allowing our team members to understand when this project is going to happen and how much time is going to be required of them. So not whilst, you know, obviously that's useful information for us when it comes to planning this project out and understanding, you know, well, in the scheme of other things and contextually in the studio, how busy are we going to be and how much work can we take on, you know, alongside that. It's also allowing our team members to budget those hours and have you know, we're setting their expectations when it comes to the work that we're going to be asking for them at that point in time. So it means that when that time rolls around, they'll be able to effectively plan their own weeks and days and understand what's needed of them and exactly. when it's needed by. So getting that information in there really helps that communication and it's really simple, easy to do. Yeah. But we want to make sure that those dates and those hours planned are as accurate as possible. And if you want to improve the accuracy around that planning, I would suggest looking back at old projects, whether mm -hmm. they've done similar work and looking at what was planned initially, what was budgeted and how did you kind of perform against that? Did you go over budget? Did you go under budget when it came to those hours against that, you know, discovery phase? If you've done these kinds of ad campaigns before, mm -hmm. do you need to commit for more or less? Um, yeah. These are all questions you should be asking. Exactly. And it has worked both ways. So you not only you're creating a good plan for yourself, so you know when you expect uh, parts of the project uh, to be due, but also for your team member to understand what needs to be done and when. So that's really all they need to know when it comes to just working on that project. Exactly. Setting your team up for success is important, and you can do that from the schedule screen. Exactly. Um, and looking ahead at these dates, it looks like we actually haven't got too much work planned in at the moment. Polly, you look really available, oh. so I'm going to get you in on this one. Why and not? again, we can see our team members along here. I've used those date range brackets there to kind of look at the dates of just this project so I can see across the, that month um, who's going to be available. And then when you hover, we'll show you the work hours that they've currently got available. Um, you know what's remaining from those work hours to be worked on and if there is any time that's planned mm -hmm. and for example now if I do budget in maybe I'll say Polly and Michael are going to work on that discovery phase together maybe 60 hours each or 60 hours across the two of them for those two weeks that's 30 hours each which you know gets you about 15 hours a week mm -hmm. I think if we plot that at three hours a day that should do it and I want to budget Michael in for the same amount of work so awesome. now I've got those that work planned in here. I can actually see that we've got 30 hours of paused tasks for Michael and for Polly. So you're able to kind of see in the scheme of other things, obviously those tasks aren't in play yet. Polly and Michael won't see those on their mm -hmm. to-do screen, but we can at least plan and get help gauge capacity by getting those, those time entries in early. Yeah. All those tasks. And the beauty of the screen is that um, it's in sync with everyone's to-do screens too. Mm -hmm. So maybe, perhaps, I actually don't have access to, to the schedule screen and I don't need to. I only see my to-do screen and when Patty just planned out three hours a day for, in September, I will only see it when you want me to work on it. So when this item will be in play and when it's time for me to start working on it. So I don't need to see this screen and get you know all confused about that. So as a Obviously, as a traffic manager, the studio manager, this is very important for you to understand in order to then totally. plan out future jobs. You're not going to need to know about this until it's time to know about it. Exactly. And we whack this one in play, for example. And once those are play, they've turned green, um, it's going to surface those for Polly. Um, mm -hmm. Kim's just asked a good question. Does it automatically turn into play when dates come around? 
No, they don't. Um, and the reason for that is because those dates don't always necessarily play into what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. We'll need to set up those statuses ourselves, um, but they can be done easily here. Obviously, if you are grouping this list by when things are due, you're going to see those in the priority of when they're coming through. So um, you'll be able to jump in easily, see what needs to be worked on, and then throw them into play then. So in this instance, Michael won't see these tasks, but Polly will, mm -hmm. um, which is cool. Cool. Um, um, should we have a look at a different way of how you can actually see, um, uh, understand what is happening in your studio, uh, grouping this view by a team member, for example? Sure. So we are actually on the job schedule right now, and what Patty is going to do is going to group this view by a team member that will allow us to see. Uh, actually, we're just looking at that job. Only. Filter just for this job. Yeah. Just for this job, but if you don't want that, you can actually undo that and see what everyone is working on and a certain period of time. So let's um, let's look at today, let's Everything. look at this week, yeah. the next two months actually, and see every team member in your team. And if you say, if you open up one of us, maybe maybe Danielle, you will see uh, what's Danielle, what jobs Danielle is working on. and what are the items that she's actually been assigned to as well exactly. and their plan time and available time. Exactly. And within here, you are seeing all these items across stream time that are currently in play that Danielle's assigned to. So whilst, you know, all of these might actually be in play and needing to be worked on, what you can do is come in here and manage these tasks for mm -hmm. Danielle. So if maybe this master plan is done, we can help clean up what Danielle's item list looks like mm -hmm. by amending these statuses or maybe something's actually in pause, doesn't need to be worked on yet, we can put that one on hold. Mm -hmm. um, we can come in here and control these to keep that night and nice and tidy for Danielle to help her kind of manage her workload. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we can also see where the time is assigned against these tasks. Obviously on this grid, we are able to just click in and paint some time and you'll see that this does operate as a hot a heat map. So mm -hmm. we are gonna turn these things red when Danielle is overbooked um, for her days. And we're just doing that to make sure that Danielle's not working more than she should be. Um, mm -hmm. we, wanna, we wanna look after her and we wanna make sure we're not overworking her. Exactly. Cool. And from here, you can also, should we just quickly jump into Danielle's to-do and have a look how sure. um, important it is to set those due dates mm -hmm. to items and plan time, because otherwise Danielle wouldn't know what needs to be done and exactly. when. Um, so we can, we actually just on Danielle's to-do screen where uh, we've just planned out some time for her, uh, I just did, and also on the sidebar here on Danielle's items sidebar, she sees all the items that she's been assigned to uh, that's been prioritized by the due date. So we are seeing the first one, which is the concept development, which is due this Friday. Mm -hmm. So Danielle would make the decision herself and um, she will probably start working on it as soon as she can. Uh, Discover for Apple Watch brand is it's due in eight days. So that's the second priority. So it's really important when you're planning a job from the schedule or from the job page, it's important to add those due dates in. And you can always move them, you know, if they shift. And we're making it very easy for you to do that from the schedules. Yeah, it's very flexible. Um, and one other thing that kind of just alluding to what you were saying and what we were saying before about having these due dates and the time, um, it, it, what we're doing is giving, your, you know, what we're trying to help you do is give your team members everything they need to plan their own week and own time. And sure. as you were saying, Polly, obviously this concept development is due on Friday, 16 hours need to be done. I can see currently um, Danielle's got 11 and a half hours, oh, you know, 11 and a half hours worth of tasks currently created. But she's going to need to increase that in order to get that concept development done in time. And it's really easy for her to see mm -hmm. when we hover over these and look at that black box. So um, essentially, by setting all that information up at the start of the project, your team members know exactly what needs to be done and giving them the ability to actually make sure that those jobs get done themselves. And yeah. so what that's doing is taking the weight off the project manager, off the traffic manager, um, who's kind of in charge of making sure things happen on time yeah. and, you know, dispersing that across the team members as well. And it's not, it's not a lot of weight to kind of put on these people. It's just allowing them to, to know when things need to happen by and giving them the, um, 
you know, the owners to do it themselves and yeah. keep on top of these things. So by kind of sharing that responsibility, it's making life as a traffic manager much easier. It's more true. be a person where you can, you can, you know, sit over the top and just make sure everything's everything's running to track. Mm, it's exactly right. And not everything will be scheduled, you know. Uh, perhaps you have, um, you could speak <laughs> to the team and decide whether you can actually schedule stuff for the team if it's urgent and allow them to plan out the rest of their day for themselves, yeah. looking at those items that you've planned out for them. It's a good way, you know, um, managing your team without them feeling managed, feeling yeah. like they are being managed. And the best way to kind of see what everyone is currently working on mm -hmm. is in the to-do schedule here. So we, before we were in the job schedule, we've just navigated across to the to-do schedule. And this is just a bird's eye view of what's happening across all your team members at any point in time. Um, it's their to-do list, but at a higher level. And from here, you can see which tasks are connected related to the same job. When you hover, we'll highlight those. Um, again, you're seeing capacity. You can also schedule and reallocate work from here as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe Danielle is sick today and someone needs to jump on that concept development for Campos to get it done by Friday. Perhaps I can see Andy's got quite a bit of availability. I can just pick up that task and assign it to him. And I mm -hmm. might want to have Andy spending the whole day doing that to make sure we get as much done as possible yep. before Friday. You can even duplicate a task from here and move it to another week if you need to. Yeah, well, um, I can see Michael's available as well. Yeah. So why don't we get those two guys on it um, to make sure we get that one done in time. And by holding down Alt there, mm. clicking and dragging, we can actually duplicate that task and repeat it. So if you do have two men team members working on the same project, mm. that's the most effective way to make sure that it gets done. For sure. And if you don't want to see everyone's in, everyone in your team's to-do screens, you don't have to. You can just choose the team members that you want to see. So let's say Danielle, uh, Nate, and Michael. Perfect. So, oh, huh? Sorry, I threw Andy it's in fine. there. So. It's fine. And yeah, Andy as well. So perhaps it's one project that needs to be due by the end of the month. So you just want to see and uh, have a look at the team's to-do, that who's working on that project. So only that team. Exactly. Cool. cool. Great. Um, well, I think there's one more area that we do want to take a look at today um, when it comes to managing your team, resourcing, engaging capacity, and that's priorities. Yeah. As we were kind of saying earlier, we started to see people use priorities as a way to look at the workload across their team members and see who's currently got a lot going on, who doesn't, where is there room for someone else to pick up something. Mm. And priorities is a great way to do that because it's a very visual way of seeing how busy people are. So obviously, for those who aren't familiar with priorities, um, what we've done here is we've come in, we've set up these columns and we've named these columns team members. This is all customizable. We can do whatever we want with mm. these. Um, in this instance, we're creating a team member board. Um, within these, we've got jobs. So what we've done is we've just added the jobs that those team members are working on to those lists. And it's quite useful because we've got out up here on the right hand side, you can turn on and off different options on the card, things you might want to see or hide. Mm -hmm. And we do want to see our team members here because that's going to just clarify to us that that team member is working on the project and, you know, how how much, how big is that project? You know, how many of our team members are currently being involved from it? Yep. And I can see that that Parama Road job at the top is pretty busy. Pretty much everyone in the studios has got a hand on that. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are smaller projects around, for example, this one down the bottom here just has uh, a few of us on. Yeah, you've got a lot of freedom with priorities. So this is one of the ways you can be using this screen as a um, traffic manager or the studio manager. And the beauty of this is I can go into your priority screen and take a look or make changes because I'm working with you on a certain project and I just want, or perhaps I'm working with an MD uh, and we are trying to decide whether we can take another project on. So you can see are your team, how busy your team is right now. So you can go into your team's priority boards and have a look at that if you do have this um, setup. Exactly. One other thing you can do from here when it comes to managing your team and resourcing your team is actually create tasks for your mm -hmm. team from here. So if there is a piece of work that needs to be done, for example, uh, maybe now I'll create a task for that. I'll add that Spotify job to Polly's list, to Polly's priorities board because I know mm -hmm. she's on it. Um, I can actually create a task for Polly right from here. So I can add a to-do and I can 
assign it to Polly. Uh, it's going to be for this discovery. Um, maybe we just want to track this meeting that we've had. So initial research mm -hmm. meeting with Spotify team. I just want to create that task and easily done. So heading to Polly's to-do screen now, she's going to see that one there, mm. ready to be tracked. But Polly, being Polly, I can have, even go to my priority board and track time from there. Exactly. Well, and yeah. log time from there. Exactly. So I don't have to leave that area of stream time and exactly. just work from there. Exactly. Mm. Great. Awesome. Well, that's getting towards the end of the session this morning. Mm -hmm. um, thanks everybody for tuning in. It seems yeah. like there are no questions, which either means we've answered them all or everyone's confused, everyone's <laughs> confused and <laughs> everyone's brain hurts. But mm. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully that was a useful session for yeah. everybody. Um, if you do have any questions following up, uh, please just shoot us a message. Um, you know how to do that. Just find us in the help menu in stream time. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.